Presbyterian Church in Goldfield, Iowa. We are so glad that you have joined us today as we praise God together. Before we begin our worship service, just a couple quick announcements. The first is that we miss you, and we would like to check in with our members, with our friends and family who are watching online. If you have a moment, would you either drop in the comments or maybe take time to send a picture of you or your family to the church and just give us a glimpse of what you're up to. Uh, check in, let us know how you're doing. Along those lines, we are planning to do some kind of a backpack blessing. We typically do this every fall before the kids go back to school. This year we know it's a little bit different. We know that parents are wrestling with the best way to send their kids to school and, and there's a little extra anxiety in the mix for teachers and staff and administration. So we would like to make sure that we pray and cover the school year with prayer. So what I would ask you to do, if you are going back to school as a student, as a teacher, as a paraeducator or as an administrator or somebody on school staff, maybe a bus driver or the school secretary, would you take a picture of yourself holding whatever bag you take with you, whether it's a backpack or a purse or maybe just you yourself. But if you would take that picture and get it to me, I would like to put together a backpack blessing slideshow for us. So I'm going to give you a week to do that, and then I'm going to follow up with you. If I know that you have cute kids and you haven't sent us a picture, I'm going to hunt you down and find a picture. That sounds really creepy. Anyway, if you would humor us and just check in, let us know how you're doing. This week we do resume our Wednesday afternoon Bible study. Um, by afternoon, I mean like 12.01, because this is a Lunch and Learn Bible study that we meet from noon to one out in the shady part of our parking lot. Bring a lawn chair, bring lunch if you want, bring a Bible, um, we'll continue on. If you haven't come to that yet, but you're able to, drop in. It's, it's a very comfortable conversation format, so you don't have to have been in every session, um, but you're always welcome. For now though, let's begin our time of worship. Please join me in the call to worship. So often we expect life to wow and dazzle us. But God, you often come in the still, the small, the meek. So when we're overloaded by constant stimulus and marketing, we pray that you'd settle us with the unforced rhythms of grace. When our hearts are dried up by apathy and cynicism, we pray that you would open up the wellspring of your mercy. God, we are seeking you in hopeful expectation. You are trustworthy and good. For this, we give you thanks. Amen. throne, we do so with humility and with 
that recognition that we are not perfect or blameless. We come confessing, eager for God's healing touch. Let us pray. God, you call us to step out in faith, to place our lives in your hands, and to wholeheartedly commit to following you. We confess that we find this difficult to do. It is not always easy to follow where you lead, to turn away from our own personal wants and desires, to let go of our safety nets, and trust that you will provide for us in all things. Forgive us when we doubt you, God. Increase our faith. Open our eyes to see past our own interests and concerns to your broader vision for us and for our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ even prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone and a new life has begun. Today, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that our hearts and minds may be opened to know your truth and your way. Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from the Old Testament, from 1 Kings. We catch up with a prophet on the run. Elijah has just had one of the most dramatic moments in his ministry, where he has had a show-off between his God, our Almighty God, and the God of Baal. He has slaughtered lots of other false prophets, and he is on the run. Let's catch up with Elijah and see what God says to him. This is 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 9 to 18. At that place, Elijah came to a cave, and he spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. There came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. 
Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of abel as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew. This, I know, is a familiar story. I know it's a Bible school one that pops up. And I know this is a good image for us now more than ever. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, Jesus came walking towards them, the disciples on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped Jesus, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have two great stories before us today. I thought about picking one and, and zooming in on it, going deep, but I really liked the combination of Elijah and Peter. I see some similarities in structure in these stories, and I see a lot of touch, touching points between what's happening to them and what's happening with us. So we get two today, two vignettes, two faith heroes for us, um, two instances where we see how God reaches out to support and care for his people. Let's start looking closer at Elijah here. We have Elijah, this legendary prophet, certainly, certainly one of our faith heroes. Elijah has had this showdown with other prophets. He is on the run. He is fearful for his life. He feels like there is nobody left on his side on his team, nobody left fighting for him at all. And so he does what many of us do or are tempted to do when we are scared or exhausted. He finds a little hidey hole, right? He finds this cave and he spends a dark, dark night in that cave. He's scared, he's worried that even God has left him. And then we see God reaches out to him He's told, go stand out on the mountain and God is going to walk right by you. And so Elijah does just that. And he's out on this mountain outside of this cave. And suddenly there's wind, there's an earthquake. The mountain itself is breaking down with rock slides falling all around him. There's an earthquake. And if that's not enough, there's even a stupid fire. There are all of these loud, dramatic signs. But you notice what happens. God shows up in the quiet silence after all of those other loud, intense, shaking, hot events happen. Let's look at Peter. 
Peter also is scared, frightened, fearful. The difference is that Peter is on a boat with disciples and friends, and yet they've been told, go on ahead, I'll catch up. And so they're out in the middle of this bumpy, rocking sea. And Jesus, walking towards them, looks more like a ghost than their friend, than their savior. And Peter is the first one to say, maybe it's Jesus. In the story, he calls out, if it's you, Jesus, tell me to walk towards you. Yeah, right, prove it. And Jesus says, okay, come on out. And so Peter starts walking towards him. And then it's like, all of a sudden, Peter realizes what he's doing. And that fear, that doubt, all of that invades his head. And he starts to sink. Two different people separated in different times, in different locations. Two faithful people who are close to God, close to Jesus. Two people desperately in need of saving, in need of help. Steve and I have been watching Big Brother this summer. Uh, we like reality television, we like the scheming, the plotting. Um, even if you don't, I think you can still maybe come along with me to this illustration. Um, they started a new season of All Stars and one of the first uh, contests that the contestants faced was this race. Whoever had the fastest time from point A to point B would become the new head of household. And to get from point A to point B, you had to make this series of leaps and jumps from different pedestal stepping stones. And so, I mean, I guess it looks easy if that's the kind of thing you do. You just run across these stones and then you hit the buzzer and you lock in your time. But some of the stones were on springs. And so some were sturdy as you ran and then every once in a while you'd hit a wobbly stone and that would rock and throw people off onto the ground. It kind of became this metaphor for me as I thought about that silly Big Brother game and these two stories. I wonder sometimes when we take that step of faith to do what God calls us to do, do we ever fear that we're going to hit a wobbly step? Instead of the sturdy stepping stones, do we think we're maybe going to hit that wobbly stone and fall to the side, maybe twisting or hurting an ankle? I don't know about you, but I'm fearful of that sometimes. Sometimes you stop and you overthink what you're doing and you're wondering, is this right? On the, on the show, we saw some people reach out with one foot, gingerly testing each stone, which was a good way of finding out if it was sturdy or wobbly. It killed their time though, but that's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Both Elijah and Peter in these stories have that moment of wobbly faith for different reasons. Elijah has done all of these huge, amazing, dramatic things, and now he finds himself all alone. Peter, surrounded by disciples, still takes that step out of the boat, onto the sea, by himself, towards Jesus. He wobbles too. In both stories, though, God is there, right? Elijah at last listens to the silence. And then the voice of God says, get help, form a team, an alliance, find people to help you. And God gives him all of these people that are going to help do what he needs to do next. Some of the names I could even pronounce right. <laughs> he tells him, go back and you're going to appoint Hazael as king and Jehu as king and Elisha is going to become a prophet in your place. Here's your help, here's your team, here's your backup. You're not alone. You have help. Peter is skeptical, right? Peter says, if it's you, Jesus, prove it. Have me come walk to you on the water. And Jesus says, all right, come on. Peter gets out of the boat, walks on the water, and as he's coming towards Jesus, suddenly he remembers the wind and he becomes frightened and starts to sink. In that moment, Peter thinks to cry out, Lord, save me. And then immediately, Jesus is there. Peter hits that wobbly step. Elijah has fallen down completely. 
And in both instances, God shows up to rescue and save them. How are you doing today? Do you feel like you need a hidey hole, a safe cave for the night? Do you feel like it's loud? Are you hearing hurricane winds? Are you fearful of fire, of earthquakes? Do you feel like everything around you is unstable and falling apart? Listen to the silence. God is with you. God is there. Maybe God is going to tell you the same thing that God told Elijah. There are people who can help you. You're not alone. Find friends. Maybe you're like Peter. Maybe all of this feels like you're in this boat that's shaking. Maybe you feel called to step out of even the safety of that boat to those waves that are rocking back and forth. If you're stepping out of the boat, keep your eyes on Christ. Don't get distracted by the wind. Don't let that fear hit you. But if it does, if you hit a wobble step, know that you can trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You too can cry out, save me, Jesus. And Jesus might give you a little mini lecture. You have little faith, why do you doubt? But he's going to save you, and that wind is going to cease. God is there for you. I don't know who God is going to form for your team. I have ideas of people who can help you. If you're feeling all alone, if you are fearful, if you are by yourself, know that there are family members who would help you, there are friends, there is the church, there are also ways to get professional help. I had a phone conversation earlier this week with a friend of our church, and she admitted to me that she has sought out help from a counselor. And it's not a faith issue. It doesn't mean that you don't fully trust in God. It means that God gives us resources and people who can help us get through challenging times. And this is a challenging time. Elijah needed help and support. We need help and support. We're not alone in this. Listen to that quiet silence of God. And if you need help forming a team to get you through, I am glad to help uh, pray and discern who is on your team who can help. Peter, right? Peter in danger cries out to Jesus and Really, that's a prayer. The difference is he's face-to-face -face with Jesus and can pray directly towards him. Let's not forget that we have faith in a God and a Savior who is bigger than all of this. Whether it's wind or earthquakes or fire or that fierce rocking sea, whatever kind of chaos you are facing, know that God is stronger and Jesus is here to save us. The Holy Spirit draws us together this is but a moment, a glimpse, a time. And someday we are going to look back on this and say, remember when? And we're going to look back on it from a safer place. That boat doesn't stay out on that rocking, chaotic sea forever. The wind dies, the boat comes back to shore, the disciples stand on solid ground. Elijah doesn't stay in that cave frightened by night and dark and wind and earthquakes and all of the other loud, loud things. Quiet returns. There's peace. There's stillness. There's the trustworthy foundation of God. Whatever you're going through, seek God. Turn to Christ. Listen for that nudge of the Holy Spirit. And know that you are dearly, dearly loved by a God who is your next sturdy step. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh,
to bring to God today? Do you have joys? Do you have concerns? Do you have an offering? Do you feel like your life is full and you want to pay it forward and share that with someone else? Whatever you bring to God, know that God is ready to receive, ready to hear you, ready to celebrate with you, ready to cry with you. Let's take time now to pray together. Almighty God, we trust in you, even when we hit a wobble, even when we have a moment of doubt, you are still a God who is faithful to your people. Thank you for loving us so well. Today we come to you with much on our hearts and our minds. We think of people ready to head back to school, all through the, the grades, um, elementary, middle school, high school, college, beyond. We ask, Lord, that you would give us discernment, wisdom, help us to turn to you no matter what we face in the semesters ahead. We pray for leaders, especially school administrators and teachers, professors, uh, all the staff and all the people it takes to make up the school system. We pray that you would provide health, safety, help us to take care of each other in loving ways. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to give us patience and give us all that we need as we face unprecedented times. We are settling into quarantine, to life shaped by this virus, and we don't like it. We need your help. We need to know, God, that we're not alone. Remind us of who we are as your children. Encourage us, lift us up, and help us to be your hands and feet to others around us. Help us find meaningful ways to stay connected. Help us to remember to turn to you with joys, with sorrows. We pray for our brothers and sisters who grieve recent losses. We pray for those experiencing loneliness. We pray for those facing health issues whether they be physical, spiritual, or mental health, we ask God that you would continue to guide treatment through your trained professionals and other ways. We pray for our leaders, that you would help them to rule with wisdom and integrity, help them to discern the next faithful step as well. God, we pray for our church and other congregations around the globe. We pray that as we face unique worship uh, formats and times that you would help us to still faithfully gather however we can to worship and bring honor and glory to your name. We are so thankful for Jesus, for his hand reaching out to pull us out of sinking, to save us from chaotic water. We are mindful of all that he did and taught, the stories he told, the love he shared. We are thankful, God, that that love and grace extends to us today. We are bold as your children to pray the prayer you gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Pero 
Your charge this week is to trust in a God who is a faithful, firm foundation. Reach out for Christ, and Christ will extend a hand and pull you out of whatever you're sinking into. Now receive your blessing. May God be above you to bless you, beneath you to hold you up. May the Holy Spirit go in front of you to guide you and be behind you to prod you along life's way. And may Jesus Christ be alongside you as your closest friend and dearest companion. Amen.